Okay, let me start with a classical example. This was an 8 year old girl child posted for cervical biopsy and cervical, uh, cervical node biopsy and the child was absolutely asymptomatic. Okay, 10 minutes down the procedure, the patient could not be ventilated and by the time they revived, the patient had severe brain damage and death. And this was the second case, a 8 year child who was um, posted for anterior mediastinal mass removal. Everything went off well, the child could be ventilated, everything was fine, there was no airway compromise in this child. But in the post-op period, the child became increasingly blue and the patient was cyanotic and they reintubated, but the child was getting increasingly cyanotic, not able to improve, but airway was adequate. At the cellular level, here you can see this is the systole and this is the diastole. In systole, you can see the myosin and actin are locked. But in diastole, what happens is this myosin and actins are unlocked. For that, you have to take the calcium out or into the, from the cytoplasm into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. For that, there need to be a sodium calcium exchanger and phosphorylation of phospholamine has to happen. This both are energy consuming process. So, ATP is broken down to ADP. These are all the small, small things which happen at the cellular level for diastole. Coming to the hemodynamic and the ECG, where, where is the diastolic period? Usually, it starts at the end of systole. Here, this is the ventricular wave, pressure waveform. You can see this is the maximum of the systole. Usually, diastole starts at the end of systole and goes up to the First, why we have to monitor cardiac output? Here, you look at two animals, one is rabbit, one is cat. Both look similar. Similarly, by looking at this, you can't treat this. That is what exactly happened with pressure volume relationship. You can't look at pressure and treat volume. What we are going to do is, we just measure a central venous pressure. A catheter is placed at the SVC RA junction and you measure what is called the central venous pressure. And for this central venous pressure to reflect on right ventricular diastolic pressure, your tricuspid valve has to be normal. For your right ventricular end diastolic pressure to reflect on the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure, your pulmonary valve, the right ventricular outflow should be normal. For the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure to reflect on the LA pressure, your pulmonary circulation, in short, your pulmonary vascular resistance has to be normal. And for the LA pressure to reflect on the left ventricular end diastolic pressure, your mitral valve has to be normal. Shock is nothing but a state of cellular and tissue hypoxia either due to decrease oxygen delivery or increase oxygen consumption or it might be due to inadequate oxygen utilization. This shock can be due to five causes, mainly septic, hypovolemic, obstructive which is like cardiac tamponade or a pericardial effusion, cardiogenic shock which might due to an acute myocardial infarction or an anaphylactic shock due to various drug reactions. What is hypovolemic here? The intravascular fluid loss is there. It might be blood, plasma, the interstitial fluid or a combination of everything. But what is hemorrhagic shock here? The blood loss, blood volume, your blood only is lost. The intravascular blood is lost. That is hemorrhagic shock. So, hemorrhagic shock is a form of hypovolemic shock. So, in the next 30 minutes, I will be talking about what are the sources and risk factor of hemorrhage in the perioperative period. Here, you can see the blood gas barrier being altered. The yellow one is the disruption of the alveolar capillary membrane and the fluid goes into the alveoli. This is the second theory of negative pressure pulmonary edema. Here, you can see the normal opening of the card. The pleural pressure is hardly minus 3 to minus 6. Rise gas exchange happened and the pulmonary capillary fluid is not moved into the alveoli. And you can see the, this is the diaphragmatic contraction and this is the venous return to the right side of the heart. Now, an obstruction happens. Here, you can see the pleural pressure required to generate the air flow inside the obstructed airway is gone up to 
minus 100. And here you can see the fluid filled alveoli. The fluid from the pulmonary capillaries is breached into the alveoli. And what happens here? The negative inspiration pressure. Here you can see the diaphragm dark arrow. When compared to this, 